All right, welcome to part two of the nitrogen cycle. Now that we know a little bit about the nitrogen cycle, how it works and how the nitrogen is transferred from one place to the next, let's figure out, well, do we as humans have an impact, all right? How do we impact and change the nitrogen cycle? Well, we know nitrogen, of course, is a good thing for plants and animals, right? We talked about how we need it for all our DNA. So what's the big deal if that nitrogen is everywhere and in abundance? Well, it's actually kind of a big deal. We have to be careful as humans that we aren't causing too much nitrogen to hang out in one certain spot. Uh, because as we're going to see here, that can cause problems impacting um, the environment on Earth. So a couple ways that we can impact the nitrogen cycle is having too much nitrogen found in certain places. Well, where is that extra nitrogen coming from? One place is from excess manure. Okay, that of course is animal waste. If there's too much animal waste hanging out in a farming type of environment, um, you know, in their manure pile, all that stuff, that can cause a backup in the nitrogen cycle. We can get too much nitrogen stored in one spot. We also, same thing can happen from our waste. Okay, human sewage can also cause an excess of nitrogen to be found in a certain spot. The most common way that we're going to talk about, at least in our community, is from too much chemical fertilizers. Okay, fertilizer is of course used to help plants grow, so it's a good thing, right? It does have a lot of nitrogen in it, but when we use too much fertilizer, on our plants and not all of it is absorbed into that plant itself, um, some of that extra can then filter off into the soil or to water um, and that we call eutrophication. Okay, pretty big fancy science word. When we have an area with too much nitrogen, with an excess of nitrogen, we call that eutrophication. When that soil or water environment has too much nitrogen we're going to see how maybe that doesn't work out in our favor. Okay, here's what's going on. We've seen this scene before, right? We've seen all that algae hanging out um, in the ponds. Well, what's happening is this nitrogen being essential for growth causes the plants to also grow, right? The more nitrogen that we have in an environment, in this case the water, the more the plants will grow. So here we have this pond with all this yucky algae stuff, okay? Why is there so much algae? Well, we have so much nitrates here, right? Those plants have an abundance of nitrate, and so we get an algae bloom, where those plants are kind of having a party, eating up all that nitrogen that they can. So what happens is these plants continue eating, and consuming those nitrates, because we know nitrates are good, um, they keep eating until that nitrogen is totally gone, okay? Once they run out of nitrogen, well, of course, those plants won't last very much longer, and they will keep eating that nitrogen, and eventually their food source will be gone, those plants will be dead. Now, here's where bacteria comes in. We said bacteria was a big part of the nitrogen cycle, um, transferring nitrogen from one form to the next. Uh, but this bacteria is a little bit different. This is what we call a decomposer bacteria. A decomposer helps consume things that are dying and decomposing. Um, in this case, the algae, after it's run out of the nitrogen. And the bacteria starts to eat it. Um, and because bacteria is a living thing, as it's eating and growing bigger and bigger, it's absorbing a great deal of oxygen. Right? Bacteria is part of the biosphere, living thing, just like you and me. Um, so it takes in a lot of oxygen. Now, when the bacteria is consuming all that oxygen from that water environment, what we end up is death to that lake or that stream or that river, whatever it is. And because all that oxygen is being taken out by bacteria, other species like fish and things aren't able to have the amount of oxygen that they need. So we can see this happening down here in this picture, right? These organisms did not have the oxygen needed due to the bacteria eating the excess of plants, taking the oxygen out. This is what we call a dead zone. 
Okay, a dead zone is going to occur when we have an excess of nitrogen causing an excess of plants, um, bringing that bacteria in to consume those plants and take the oxygen away. Okay, now I've got here a picture of one of our most prominent dead zones. Okay, this is a prominent dead zone. You can tell where this is. This is the Gulf of Mexico. And just to give you a little bit of a perspective, this red here is the most concentrated loss of oxygen. So this is the worst dead zone up here, where the blue is kind of the natural or least amount of oxygen loss. So let's think about this. Why might we have a dead zone down here in the Gulf of Mexico? What's happening here? Well, you may know that the Gulf of Mexico is fueled by our great mighty Mississippi. Right? And what's all around the Mississippi is all kinds of farmland. Right? We have farms all over the edges of the Mississippi River. Okay? Well, what we know is farms like to use, guess what? Fertilizer and have a lot of manure. Okay? So all that nitrogen is starting to be funneled into the Mississippi River, little bits here and there. And eventually, it starts to pile up. Okay, So we see algae blooms happening in the Gulf of Mexico. Bacteria comes in, taking out the oxygen and ending up with what we don't want, a dead zone down here in the Gulf of Mexico. Okay, Again, just kind of a recap. Here's what we have. We've got our NO3 nitrates coming into the water environment, causing all of this algae here, blooming on the surface as they consume all those nitrates, because we know nitrate's good for plants, okay? Eventually, that NO3, those nitrates, are going to run out, right? Eventually, the algaes will eat all of those nitrates, calling up our bacteria friends. Right? The bacteria friends start to consume that algae, and eventually that bacteria starts to take out all of the oxygen in this environment. Eventually, that oxygen becomes so low that things like our fish friend here, need, can no longer survive without that excess of oxygen. So as you can see, the human impact here on the nitrogen cycle is that if we let too much nitrogen pile up in one place by not controlling our fertilizer use, not controlling our manure waste, um, can lead to this dead zone here, the death of a water environment by loss of oxygen. Okay, so here's what I want you to do. Pause the video right now. Okay, go ahead and hit that pause button and see if you can fill in our blanks with what we talked about. Hey, okay, great. Now you've paused the video. You're ready to summarize our human impact. So let's do that for our final time here. What we know is excess fertilizer. All right, I got my bag of fertilizer over here. Excess fertilizer means more nitrogen in the water. Okay, this should actually be nitrates, right? More nitrates in the water. Um, and that's what we call that eutrophication. Okay, our big fancy science word for too much nitrates in the water or the soil. One of the causes being fertilizer. So now that we've got too much fertilizer in the water, um, too much nitrates, right? we end up with more nitrates in the water, which means we're going to have more plant growth. right? We get this yucky stuff on the surface of our ponds. Gross. Okay. What we have then are the plants consuming or eating, right? all of those nitrates. 
eventually, as those plants eat up all those nitrates, they start to run out. And when they run out of food, just like everything else, they're going to start to die out. Now, as those plants start to die out, right, here's the dead plant. Whoop. As those plants start to uh, die out, our bacteria friends come in. This time, they're doing us a favor of consuming the plant. However, by doing so, they're taking up all of our precious oxygen found in the water environments, right? The lake or the stream. And when we run out of that precious oxygen, what we end up with is our dead zone, causing our sad little fish face over here. Okay, so human impact is something that we have to think about. And that's one of the reasons why we visited the Vermilion River to see, do we play a role in impacting the health of the river at this time?